Tonight on Hotel Hell, I'm trying to breathe life back into a historic country inn. Yeah, that's The hotel's arrogant owner, Robert Dean II. I've always thought you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Treats the inn like his personal castle and treats his loyal staff with disdain. Go on then, you pompous fuck. Excuse me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? Is this hotel beyond my help? I'm barely surviving, financially and emotionally. I mean, I'm going to lose everything. The historic Juniper Hill Inn sits on a hilltop above the quaint village of Windsor, Vermont. Built in 1902, the country mansion boasts 28 luxurious bedrooms and two grand dining rooms. It is filled with original works of art and antiques, all museum quality. Antiques dealer Robert Dean II and his boyfriend Ari Nicky bought the business six years ago. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. I thought these looks good there, Robert. I thought you'd like it. The guests that we don't want here are people who don't have a lot of money. The inn may look the part, but despite Robert's dreams of an elite country estate, the hotel is barely functioning. Robert Dean has no hotel or no restaurant experience. The prices may be a little bit high for locals. $350. Two night minimum, so that's $700. $700? The lack of communication is very frustrating. Where are you? I know the customers see that every day. I need my key too, because at this point I can't even get in my room. <laughs> With bookings at an all time low, the hotel is in serious financial trouble. But that doesn't stop Robert from living a millionaire's dream. Robert believes this place is his playground. Yeah. And a playground for his friends. He's got to have a lot of clothes made by <laughs> He comps all their meals and rooms, but we never get tips. They're having a hard time paying me because they give away all of their money and food to their friends, showing off, using this as their private castle. With hardly any paying guests, it's no wonder that this inn is in the red. Yes, we are losing money. More or less like $200,000 a year. I think that the place is going to be closed, and it's, that's very sad. Gordon is going to come into this place and say this place is fucked. If I don't stop this business from bleeding money, it's doomed. I'd love to own an inn in a setting like this. If you get it right, you'd make an absolute fortune. Before I get to Juniper Hill, I want to find out what the townsfolk think of the local inn. Hello. How are you? Very well, and yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. I've been driving all morning. Um, how's Juniper? Hell in. You're gonna love it. It's beautiful. And um, reputation? It tends to be a little on the high end for our area. Okay. But I would love to have a place to go to locally. Do they not invite locals up there? I feel um, that I'd be interrupting. I feel like I'd be intruding. Oh, really? What a shame. Thank you so much. Have a great Best day and, and welcome you. to Windsor. Thank you very much indeed. Take Enjoy care. Enjoy your visit. Thank you. Here we are. Juniper Hill Inn. Now, who in the hell would bring an RV all the way up here and not stay in that stunning hotel? Look at it. My god, that's beautiful. Wow, OK. Around to the front door. Can't believe they haven't cleared the snow for guests to come in. Wow. Oh. You're kidding me. It's locked. That's not very welcoming. Why would you have a big mansion that guests can't arrive through the front fucking door? Jesus, who wants to enter through the back door? Mr. Ramsey's here. I need you to do room one right away. At least this door's open. Finally! Hello there. How are you? How are you, Mr. Ramsey? Black like Gordon, please. Oh, oh, Bloody Gordon. hell, what a nightmare. I'm Robert Dean. Robert Dean. We, uh, were you over there? I, I was at the front door, yes. OK, this is actually our entrance. And in the winter, because of snow, really? we have to keep that locked. Because otherwise, the snow load comes off and kills people. Kills people? Yeah, it can. Have you killed anyone so no. far? No. <laughs> Where's all this stuff from? Um. 
an aftermath of a antiques fair. Yeah. This looks like it could be a beautiful room, but you can't tell because it's stuffed with so much clutter. That's the reception desk. No. My God, so what is that? That is our bar right now. You are kidding me. This is the bar. Yes. With what? That? Martinis. Martinis. Well, yeah. God bless him. <laughs> Uh, made of pigs. Pig martini. Well, we have three rescue pot-bellied pigs. You have three pigs here? Right. What is that for? Were you born with this in your mouth? Yeah, don't I wish. Honestly? Uh, actually, no, that was a gift from... A giant. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Robert obviously loves to show off all his expensive antiques, but as a guest, I don't feel comfortable. I feel like I'm in a museum. This is the main formal dining room. This big chair here is for, for one. Uh, just kind of, we're known as a romantic destination and... Uh, <laughs> just out of interest, how Well, do... we would move the table. Uh, move it in for me, please? Yes. Wow, so you've got a sofa on the table. We thought it was kind of nice to have, like, a cosy banquette. Oh, well, three US presidents have dined here. Oh, really? Which ones? Uh, Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge. Teddy Roosevelt dined in here? Wow. I wanted to try to give him a little bit of a sense of the history of Juniper Hill. Wow, okay, so that's the dining room. Well, we have two dining rooms. Oh, God, you must be busy with two dining rooms. Well, I wish we were busy. Bloody hell. We have spurts of being incredibly busy. Right. Uh, where we lack is all the other times. Really? Yeah. This place looks like a millionaire's mansion, not a struggling business. I've got to scratch beneath the surface. This place per week uh, is turning how much? We're lucky if we're doing, you know, 15,000 a month. What does it cost to keep the place open? 30. Really? Yep. So you're losing $200,000 a year? It's been a nightmare. We maintained our room rates, thinking that the economy wouldn't be this long a haul. But we've all experienced those kind of difficulties, and myself included, but you, you navigate your way out of that recession. Right? Unfortunately, my partner lost his job. We expected him to have his job for a little longer. He must have gained a substantial payoff or retirement. It's all been put into this. How much? Over a million dollars. A million dollars? Into this already? Yes. And does he have an active role in the business? He tries to maintain the accounting, mm -hmm. and he helps just about with everything. Uh, we're in trouble. Trouble? You'd never guess from the look of this place. It's more like Buckingham Palace than Skid Row. Do you know what, um, Robert, honestly, I'd like to go straight to my room if you wouldn't okay. mind, please. All right. Wow. This uh, place goes on. It does. It's the largest colonial revival mansion in New England. And more paintings. Wow. And you're in the Maxwell Evart Suite, which is the original. Um, OK. Wow, beautiful room. And, uh, uh, I mean, this is, uh, this is a beautiful room, but what is that smell? I mean, seriously. It, it does smell. Yeah, but it smells shit. I mean, that is horrific. Oh, my god. It smells like sewage. Coming up, Robert's staff turn on him. I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how the people that I work with feel. The entire staff is ready to walk out. You can talk to him. He's your fucking chef. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. And I have to step in. How dare you? You still haven't got it. Get your head out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. Excuse me. Go on, then, you pompous fuck. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I've just met its owner, Robert Dean II, who's filled his hotel with expensive art and antiques. Were you born with this in your mouth? But he can't fill his rooms, and his business is struggling. You're losing $200,000 a year. It's been a nightmare. And no wonder, because although the room he's put me in looks nice... Beautiful room. ...it has one major drawback. What is that smell? It smells like raw sewage. We had a plumbing issue, and it's... like someone's it's... shut under the bed and... Um... How much? This room goes for $350 a night. $350 a night for a room that smells of shit? Well... You're kidding me. We haven't rented it, though. Bloody hell. It's been out of use for, um, four months. Before. Four months? Yeah. Oh, come on. It has been. This is crazy. It is crazy. It doesn't make sense. I've got to get out of here. It stinks of shit. Is there another room, Yes, please? I have room, too. Bloody yeah. hell. I didn't realise... $350 to be caked in shit? Wow, it's gorgeous, and this one doesn't smell like crap. I'm going to quickly uh, unpack, and then I would uh, I would like to have a um, a quick bite of lunch. Okay, I'll yeah? tell, I'll notify the chef. What time does the restaurant close for lunch? I know. Well, it's we two actually don't serve lunch normally, but we're happy to prepare you something. <laughs> Is that a joke? We, we serve breakfast no, no, and dinner. Stop! 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 You don't actually serve lunch. No. The restaurant's closed for lunch. Yes. If someone requests lunch, we'll make lunch for them, but. 
could you uh, prepare lunch for me? Uh, yes, I can. I'll tell the chef. Please. Oh, okay. Uh, thank you. Yes. Not open for lunch. Gordon is going to want lunch. Huh? Gordon wants lunch. What am I supposed to do with that information? Hmm. That was a welcome breath of fresh air on the back of that disgusting smell of crap in that room. I can't believe it. And the rooms are gorgeous, and yet how could you have a room that has been smelling for months that bad, and then he sticks me in it? What a muppet. Despite the hideous smell in that first guest room, I've still worked up quite an appetite. Hello. Hi, how are you? Barbara. Barbara, how glamorous are you? How nice are you to see you. Likewise. I have a mad crush on Gordon, as he knows I'm a cougar. <laughs> how old are you now? I, oh, don't You're not old. Last week I turned 70. You're kidding me. You look you a million dollars. You have made my year. 70. Watch <laughs> out, Joan Collins, I'm telling you now. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> Barbara, what's wrong with this place? Well... In a nutshell. Don't get any people. Mm -hmm. Like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. But hold on a minute. You, you don't get paid, and when you do... Not, at, not on time. We're supposed to get paid every two weeks. So what do you earn a fortnight? I made 6000 this year. $6,000 a year? That's ridiculous. You know, you got to have the money flowing, and it's almost come to a standstill at this point. My last paycheck was $48. Unbelievable. Robert's obviously got enough money to fill the guest rooms with fine art and antique furniture, but he doesn't pay his staff. And I'm starving. What would you recommend? The crab cakes with a little salad. So this is the dinner menu. OK, because we're not open for lunch. Right. And the lamb sounds great as well. You want the lamb? Yeah. All right. Darling, is this a uh, prefix menu or...? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. there's no prices on here. What sort of restaurant doesn't have prices on the menu? It's like a club for millionaires where, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. I've got a supplement of $15 from the lamb. It's How enough, much is...? Enough charge for the lamb. Is Robert nearby? How much is it for three courses? $59. $59. So if we had the lamb... It would be... 74 People are horrified at the price of the food. This is why a lot of people think that Juniper Hill is snobbish. When we typically take a reservation, we will tell people it's a three-course meal. But that's for the residents. I'm talking about a local coming in here. We're reservation only, though, so nobody walks in. We don't what? have walk-in. How can you expect to appeal to the locals? Um, we haven't identified the appropriate people to come here, or... Hold on a minute. What do you mean, appropriate people? Hold on. People who can afford $59 for three courses. Appropriate people? What a snob. Where does he think he is? The Ritz? And where's your table? Which one's your table? Uh, well, most of the time I eat in our RV, our motor coach. Say that again? Oh, uh, we have a motor coach to the side. Price and where did it come from? Is it yours? You rent it? Uh, yeah, it's ours. We, I mean, we owe on it, but we bought it and we bought, bought it. it? Yeah. How much was that? Over a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars? You're three years away from 50. You should not be living in an RV. We don't live in uh, an RV. Um, it is a motor coach, which is the higher end version of an RV. It is that psychological break for us, and it gives me a place to relax and kind of unwind. I actually love it. I could live there the rest of my life, to be honest with you. It's quiet, it's clean. I suppose if this place doesn't get fixed, then you might be in there full time, yeah. I just sat down for lunch at the Juniper Hill Inn. Hello. And already I've found out the staff aren't paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my page. And the owners live in a camper outside. How much was that? Uh, over $100,000. This place is baffling. I hope the food makes more sense. Excellent. <laughs> wow. Where are the crab cakes? Oh, that's in there, underneath there. Are they mini crab cakes? Are we, uh... The chef has decided that those are the size that he needs to serve. Mm-hmm. I mean, that tastes dreadful. That thing tastes sort of washy and soapy. And $20 for that? He's as cheap with his crab cakes as he is with his staff. Wow. Now for the lamb, with Robert's ridiculous $15 extra charge. It's um, a rack of lamb mackerel. encrusted in macadamia nuts, uh, fresh herbs, and a little bit of Dijon mustard. It's served with a honey vinegar reduction. It's not even cooked properly. I'll rest it and take that. I always get nervous when you see white fat like that on the side of the chop. 
Is it to your liking? I mean, it's pretty raw in the center. You like the flavor of it, though, the honey curry? No, way too no. sweet. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not satisfied with uh, the quality of the food that's coming out of the kitchen. I believe our chef has a learning curve to be well, where he needs to be. Thank you. We just lost our other chef. Right. Why did the chef leave? I'm supposed to tell you the truth, right? The truth is all I want to know. Why did the chef leave? Well, her paycheck. Mm. She put all her, everything on her uh, charge cards, and, and she just figured she wasn't paid back for what she... The chef bought produce on her she credit did, card? She did everything. She was the best chef ever. Barbara, that's dreadful. I'm starving. Um, the peanut butter chocolate decadence, uh, I could do with some of that. Pick me up, please. Thank you. God. A chef that left because she had to buy produce on her own credit card. I mean, this guy's priorities are upside down. A bit like this inn. Hey, are you ready? This, he said, he doesn't care for the sweetness, there's fat around it. He didn't care for the flavor of the honey gar. Wow. Thank you very much. Um, did you cut it in half? Because it looks like someone's taken it. And where's the other half gone? Uh, it goes to the another person who orders. Oh, no, I want my other half. $74. This place is insane. Listen, half my dessert's missing. If you think I'm spending $74 for a dessert that is half cocked. Mm. It's actually quite nice. There is hope. I'm sorry. You like I'm, I'm going to say that that is not a dessert that he made. Barbara made it. No. Nope. Somebody else makes desserts. It's ordered. Like store bought. Like through one of our purveyors. What? Where's the chef? He's in the kitchen. Can you get him out, please? Yes. What? How you doing, chef? Julian, in my opinion, is not living up to his potential as a chef. He will try to cut corners, and I think Gordon needs to know these things. I've just spent $74 for three plates of absolute dire, dated shit food. Crab cakes? Yes, sir. You can't put two little half testicle sized fucking crab cakes that came from a can. There's bigger fucking cakes, chef, at a fucking canopy party. My lamb was cold in the middle, the fat was white. It was almost like a mouthful of sugar. The best tasting dish for me was the fucking chocolate peanut thing that I got served half a portion. That's not even made fucking in-house. What is this? There's no synergy here. There is honestly a lack of communication often. Sometimes when I'm in the middle of doing breakfast service for the 10 people that we randomly get, I get five texts from him asking me a question. So why are you texting him? If you have a question, I'd you like should you maybe leave the RV and come out show, and talk to show us. Show me those texts. Are you nitpicking? Are you trying to control him? Are you... No, I'm trying to make sure I, I'm... I haven't been sleeping very well, to be honest with you, and uh, I've had I've been beaten down. I'll take responsibility for everything that happens in the kitchen. You don't own the place. You own it, yet he's acting more responsible. What do you own a week, if you don't mind me asking? A thousand dollars? Before taxes, four hundred. Jesus Christ Almighty! Four hundred dollars a week to be the head chef in a luxury hotel? That's insane. I mean, you're barely surviving. I'm, I'm, I don't know that I'm even barely surviving. If you're not happy with your work environment, you should leave. Are you taking the piss or is this just an abuse for you? What are you doing to these people? This is their livelihoods. This is your responsibility. Rob's world. And you're in an RV, a hundred grand. Everybody is disgusted that you live in that thing. They really are because it costs so much money and they can't get their paycheck on time. Well, that is not the That is, that not is the part case. of the issue. But we are was... surrounded by wealth and reminded of poverty at the same time because of that RV. Well, it's a symbol. To me, that RV is a symbol. And it's a symbol that you're separating yourself from everybody else. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. I'm telling you exactly how I feel and how me, the people that I work I with feel. feel. Let me tell you how I feel. Tell when me. you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu and get a menu, how long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And if I'm on the computer, usually as I'm trying to research menus, oh, research please. ingredients. Give me a break. 
I've given you plenty of breaks. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No, we, we do things. Oh, please. It's my first day at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and the battle between the chef and the owner I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. Has turned what should be a charming country inn into a war zone. I'm telling you exactly how I feel. I work very long days, yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. There's only been one paycheck that I got on time. Almost the entire staff is ready to walk out because they are tired of not getting paid. Anything to say? No. We're tired, and half the team is broke. I'm beyond angry. I'm beyond pissed off. Well, I just got a new asshole ripped to me. Gordon says that I live in a fantasy world and that uh, I live in a million dollar RV while our, our, our employees can't pay their bills and all of this kind of stuff because we don't pay them on time. And they're all complaining that they haven't gotten their paychecks this time either. Oh, they haven't. And he said that everything is all about me. I can't believe what a mess this place is. I've got to get off this hill for a bit. There's someone I need to see. Hello, is that Lida? It's Gordon Ramsay. I've got some questions about Robert and Juniper Hill. Would you mind if I pop over for five minutes, please? Great, I'll see you then. Thanks, Lida. I think the old chef that quit will be able to give me some insight into what's wrong with Juniper Hill. Hello, Lida, how, how are, are you? you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Come on in. Give me a little insight to what it was like actually working there. I have to say it was a very interesting five years. Uh, things were going very, very well. And then all of a sudden, two years into it, they stopped answering the phone. Hmm. Robert, I think, thought he was too important to answer the phone or he was too busy doing other things. So preoccupied and distracted. Very, in the way that... very preoccupied and distracted and not focused at all on maintaining his own business. Wow. I was getting cut out of a living when they did all this stuff. I used to earn forty, fifty thousand dollars in one restaurant, and now I'm down to earning uh, fifteen. Were you paid on time? Um, not very often. Um, did you ever use your own money to buy things? All the time. And then I would have to demand to be paid back, or we weren't going to open for dinner. It's insane. Barbara's been shorted checks a lot. She's barely earning hundred dollars a week. Yeah, you? and he right. won't pay. Her. And then if he had a private party with all his friends, he didn't tip them. You're kidding me. No. That's just disgusting. I mean, that's where I, I draw the... You can't do that. No. You just can't treat people like that. Now, no. he's a confirmed snob, and he thinks he's above yeah. the town. He thinks he's untouchable. I'm here to make this place work. Um, yeah. The first thing I'm going to do is burst his bubble. I'd like to be a fly on that wall, but... Would, would, <laughs> would you come back and walk through the doors to have a look at it at the end of the week and just come back for dinner? No. No, just won't go, or...? No, I'm not even interested in getting in. I, I just fear getting in one more battle with Ari or Robert. And, what a shame. Um, After five years. Yeah. Do you think I've got a chance of saving it? The problem he has now is nobody will work there. You know, I'm there to get this place turned around. Uh -huh. um, those staff deserve a better future. They do. You know, I, I feel terrible for them. Um, listen, thank you. You're very welcome. Um, appreciate your time. Enjoyed it. Thanks, Lida. Likewise. Nice to meet you. Good to see you, too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. How sad is that after five years of her life dedicated to the Juniper Hill? You know, she won't even step foot in the door. She doesn't want to even see them. The old chef left because she couldn't stand it. And the current chef looks like he's ready to walk too. I wonder if everyone here is feeling the same frustration. Jennifer, what's wrong with the place? What's wrong with the place? We're lacking uh, paychecks on time. Paycheck? You don't get paid on time either. No. We're missing basic supplies, too. Basic supplies. We don't even have, I mean, Noel purchased guest checks for us today so that uh, we've been using scrap pieces of paper. First name is? I'm Ryan Keith. Ryan Keith. So what'd you do? I'm the estate manager here. I do all the maintenance on the house. I've done everything here, though. That's why he likes me to spread out my talents to mm -hmm. try and help anybody wherever they need help. How's morale? Not good. <laughs> I personally haven't been paid since the 6th of January. Here it is the 1st of February. That's nearly a month. And you pay the employees before paying 
your bills when they've done the work. That's their livelihood. I'm amazed you're still here, working as hard as you are. Because staff never need to be treated like this, let me tell you. It's always as if what you're saying to him doesn't get through because he sees you as not an equal. He treats me like that, and that really bothers me because I feel like I've contributed a lot. It's actually pretty degrading. This is insane. Coming up, oh my god. I uncover the shocking extent of Robert's reckless spending. Thousands of dollars worth. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Robert's dreadful communication skills cause a meltdown. I said, where does this chicken? So ask him again! Tempers flare. Excuse me. I am the boss. And Robert reveals his true colors. How dare you! I'm shocked with what I'm finding at the Juniper Hill Inn. Owner Robert wants to kill his chef. How long did I ask for you to make a menu of your own? And the rest of the staff want to kill Robert. How's morale? Not good. Estate manager Ryan has told me about some of the problems, but I now he wants to show me. If you want to see the root of the problem, let's go to the basement. <laughs> to the basement? Yes, please. Jesus, what's in there? Everything. Oh, really? It's the majority of it is personal items. Not even the shelves are all lined. Bloody hell. Look at this place. Oh, my God! Look at this stuff. Stereos, wine racks, quilts, chairs, tables, copper pans, more chairs over there. Look at these. Robert prides himself in having to have the very best of everything. Christ, there's enough in here to open three restaurants. Is all this stuff still brand new? Most of it is brand new. Littered with thousands of dollars. Robert's got so much stuff, he could furnish a dozen houses. But he doesn't pay his staff. It's crazy. Where are we going? Brace yourself. We're going up to the office. You're kidding me. Oh, no. Please, come, come on. In. This is the office. This is the office. You're kidding me. Not at all. I wanted you to see. Jesus Christ. Scares me half to death. Oh, my God. This is insane. It would only take a day or two to sort out this hoarder's heaven. But Robert's left it in chaos. No wonder he spends all day hiding in his RV. This guy has lost the plot. This is disturbing. Please tell me there's no more. Yes, there's more. This is where the pigs are kept. <laughs> At least they look happy. Hey. Pigs who live a life of luxury while everyone around them suffers. Sounds strangely familiar. Bloody hell. So the owners live out, the pigs live in. There's more. So check out the storage units. Storage units? You are kidding me. No. Oh, my god. This one's all personal items. Look at oh, this. Jesus. I mean, I swear to God, it's like a special edition of Hoarders. I mean, honestly. Wow. I'm in shock. You know that. And this one? All of this entire storage unit is full of chairs. Oh, my God. Look at this stuff, honestly. I mean, they must be packed with thousands of dollars worth of... Hundreds of thousands of dollars. How much stuff does one need? Bloody hell. I can't believe how much stuff Robert has bought. He must have spent a fortune. I've got to meet Robert's partner, Ari, and find out why he's financing all this. Welcome, welcome. My name's Ari. It's a pleasure. Yes. Please. Um, my God. So, how much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars? And how much have you seen back? Nothing. It was all my, my uh, severance packages, my income that I when I was working, and then my retirement plans. Robert's savings are in artwork uh, and antiques. I have supporting this in with my, my savings. Clearly, this is a beautiful place, but putting your entire life savings into a sinking ship is insane. And with Robert at the helm treating his staff so poorly, I don't see things getting any better. Robert is in a fantasy world, and I've been struggling all day to get through to him. This place, it's dreamland, a playground for your boyfriend, Robert. Your biggest problem mm -hmm. is not Juniper Hill. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. I'm at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I've just had a difficult conversation with Robert's partner, Ari, who seems strangely unconcerned about how bad things really are here. How much money have you put into this business personally? More or less uh, over a million dollars. A million dollars. And how much have you seen back? Nothing. But I've tried to make him see who's to blame for the problems. Your biggest problem is fucking Robert. Dinner time is approaching. 
Word has spread about me being at the inn, and the place is bustling. Good to see you. Hello Hi. there. Hey. <laughs> nice to see yeah. you. I'm learning a lot about why the inn is struggling by watching Robert and Ari deal with the new influx of guests. Anyone with any restaurant experience would stagger the seating of guests. But as if they're just welcoming people to a dinner party at a Hello. private house. Hello there, how are you? Robert and Ari seat everyone at once. There, in the corner. Make pretend you're back in 1902. It's a, meant to be a relaxed evening. And Order in. And that's a recipe for disaster for Chef Julian and the wait staff. Chef, I'm making a change on 21. Write it down, don't tell me, just write it down. There's an order. Are you guys kidding me with all these orders? Who said everybody at once like this? And we don't know about pacing? How's the bread? Who's writing the tickets? Jimmy, you know, in table four, table five? Some of them have names on them, some of them do not. Who wrote that ticket? There's not even a table number on there. Table four. They just got their lobster. Where's table 23? They've got. I need one person at a time. Table I need less 20. talking in the kitchen, please. Table 23 has got Every time no I food. I'm to put something up the window. Eight people ask me for something. With Julian having been slammed by the owner's dreadful seating, Ari isn't helping the strained atmosphere with an awkward art lesson. But then, like, this, this is from 1800, and it was painted for an uh, opera house, because you know what it is. Come on. Everybody has to know what that is. It's a Hannibal going across oh, yeah. the Alps with the white elephants. Oh. Everybody should know that. <laughs> On the other side of the house, Robert's also busy giving a lecture. This is one of the original signs to the house. There's a lot of history here. Um, Teddy Roosevelt actually was best friends with the man, or a very good friend with the man who actually built the house, Maxwell Evart. Did you always get this back up? I mean. Yes. Yeah? When I have poor seating, Robert has groups of his friends come in, sitting them at once. OK, so you're waiting for your starters then? Yes. OK, yep. well, let me uh, check on those for you. OK, see how thank it's you. OK, yeah. Robert. Yes. This ticket system is bollocks, you know that? Handwritten tickets, no time on there, no proper dates, no coordination. Who trains the front of house team? Who's in charge of the restaurant? Who, who is that? Uh, I would be the host, and then... You'd be the host? Yes, the chef takes over the kitchen. This place is such a mess. Clearly, Robert has no idea how to run a hotel. Yeah, I've got a Me too. Yeah, go I'm on, trying to matter? straighten out the damn drinks, because they lose. That we lost 30-something drinks. Oh, my God. Robert, we lost 30 drinks. At least. I often find drinks not written down or... Just a, a lack of follow through. And it's a big problem when we're trying to make money. There's no communication between the bar and the dining room. So people get served drinks, but no one remembers to charge for them. But we're losing big money. No kidding, and they're losing their checks, and I'm going crazy trying to figure out a system. They have hardly any guests and don't charge the ones they do have. No wonder this place is in the red. How does that happen? But they're supposed to write the drinks down and then apply them to a table and a room, and then they go into the computer. The ticket system is bogus. And as I feared, seating everyone at once is already causing problems for the staff and the guests. Yeah. It's not very warm. Yeah. It's burnt. With guests now suffering and the kitchen falling apart from Robert's ill-managed seating, yeah. come on, I have to step in. Um, just, uh, just stop there. You have to be fucking kidding me. This goose liver is burnt to a cinder. Stop. Julian. Yes, sir. Come around, buddy. I know we're in the shit and we're busy. Food's dying in the window. A foie gras salad. I mean, honestly, it's like a piece of fucking beef jerky. Where's Ari? Get me Ari, urgently. I mean, honestly, come on, guys. Hello. I stopped that. I've just said what no. That? What is that? What is that? Foie gras. Well, that's foie gras. Mm. That is not foie gras. It's, it's not funny, guys. No, that is not funny. I mean, I know we're in the ship, but does anyone have any standards here? Yes. Well, can I see them? Yes. Can I see something to hold on to? Because right now, I just want to get out of here. I can only be as good as I am with the tools that I have. I'm embarrassed, and I know that I can do better. I know the staff can do better. First off, no more fucking tickets in the kitchen. Give him 10 minutes to catch up, OK? All right. And Robert, is it possible for the first time, put the phone away, get your jacket off, and fucking dig deep a little bit, yeah? Please? Okay, yeah? To, Somebody? I'm concerned that food is in the window, and it's just dying. Entrees on table six are in the window. 
Entree, send them. They should be sat here. I mean, I... How am I supposed to do everything back are you, here? Are, are you with me? Uh, I'm with are you. Are you an owner? I'm with you. Are you an entrepreneur? Uh? I keep trying to, you know. You can fly talk as a to sticker. him. He's your fucking chef. Well, when I try to communicate, he says, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. I can't do it. No, he doesn't. I'll fucking do find it. your balls and tell him you need to talk to him. I found my balls. Do I want him to walk out? Well, he's not going to walk out if you communicate with him. Talk to him then. Well, I have been trying to. So when he finishes it. Send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? I have been asking. I said, where does this chicken go? So ask him again! It's the middle of dinner service at Juniper Hill Inn, and Chef Julian is drowning under a flood of orders. How am I supposed to do everything back here? Owner Robert has finally decided to get his hands dirty to try and help, but he's utterly incapable of communicating with his chef. When he finishes it, send the fucking food. There's always a third dish not ready or a fourth dish. Well, it must ready. be one or two minutes behind, but unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Where's the soup go, Julian? Table 23. Okay. I just told you one minute ago. I need foie gras. Where I know, I have it right behind me. I All right, well, you see, how? Okay. Julian. Yes. That's what you call communication. It's better communication. That's yes. what you call communication, Robert. There's a difference between interrupting and no communication. And when you fucking put those entrees up there, you make sure they go. You've got to start stepping up and fucking dictating a little bit, because this is just madness. I agree. Jesus Christ. It was fuck ups from start to finish, and it was a clusterfuck, and Gordon saw that. Dreadful. With an owner and chef so incapable of communicating with each other, it's no surprise the diners are unhappy, and they're not the only ones. While Robert and Ari are living the dream, their staff are living a nightmare. Hopefully, by gathering everyone in one room, okay. I can get to the root of the problem. I've never seen a hotel and inn in such disarray. There needs to be structure, and there isn't structure. It's just like a scramble. It's a mess. There was no order in the kitchen. Nobody took responsibility for any one thing. No one has been taught any standards in any department. Really, it's like I'm, I'm racing from thing to thing. Nobody knows what the other one's doing. There's nobody here that is in control, willing to take charge. I did 40 fucking dinners by myself tonight. I could help you, and you've Excuse never me. asked. Oh, no. I can cook the rack of lamb. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse making me. one plate is nothing to brag about. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. You can't call yourself the boss if you don't fucking pay them. I mean, honestly, do you think that's normal, Ari? Do you think that's the way to look after your team? Every pay period, there is a problem with the checks. Every pay period, there's and a problem it, with the checks. And a lot of I don't know what the problem is, a lot but of I know it's the same two people And do you get it. to know about it first, or do you have to go ask him for your salary? I always ask for it. That's absolutely wrong. And the reason is... He's lying. No, 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 he's not lying. I would rather have them wait than write a check that's going to bounce. What? Because I don't... How about telling him it's not going to be ready? Rather than having to ask, like some skivvy, cap in hand, please, sir, may I get paid? Anybody else have to wait? Yes. Mm -hmm. How long? Five days more. I have three days. Barbara? I had to wait five weeks. You had to what? I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. Five weeks? Mm -hmm. Guys, you come in and you work your ass off. The least these two guys can do is pay your fucking salary on time. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. I'm trying to communicate with brides. I'm trying to send out things. I have to have peaceful time in order to do my work. Are you always this pathetic? I am not pathetic. Well, when are you going to stand up and start showing some respect for your team and start growing a pair to sort of understand the mess you're in? I understand the mess we're in. Right. I'm fighting for the team. You dug the fucking hole. Yes, we And did. put them in it. So they're fucked. They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I mean, God. you know, the bottom line is... Oh, how dare you? No, they, they don't have to work paycheck. here. How dare you? How fucking dare you? They don't have to work here. Oh, my God. I... 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 You can't, disrespectful, can't. disgusting man. They don't have to work here. I don't think you realise how fucking lucky you are. Because if it wasn't for one, two, three, four, five, six of them, you'd be driving that RV miles away from here. Robert definitely needs a reality check. It's life or death right now. And I don't think he actually realizes what kind of jeopardy this place is in. It's not all about you, Robert. Robert's world, Robert's bubble, Robert's dream. You're not the lord of the manor, and you're not the great Gatsby. You're, 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 you're Robert. 
There's only me in here. That excuse thinks... me, excuse me. Go Bye. on then, you pompous fuck. Excuse Just... me. Don't talk to me like well, that. Well, what's wrong with it? I want to know what's Don't wrong with it. Don't speak to me like that. Well, I'm that. telling you, you get your head me. out of your ass and start getting a little fucking real. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. Start paying a little bit more attention to the guys on the ground. Understand how hard it is out there. Forget your fucking antique roadshow and start from the bottom running this business. You're right, there's no structure. It's fragmented. The team needs a leader. They need a structure. They need a mentor. They need some support. And all they get is nitpicks. What kind of motivation is that? All I've heard since I've been here is that you're just blaming people. Well, I'm blaming you for not taking charge. Get fucking real. Previously on Hotel Hell, I found out the upscale Juniper Hill Inn in Windsor, Vermont, is bleeding money. So you're losing over $200,000 a year? We're in trouble. And it's because the owners have spent a fortune to make this place look like an art museum. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Treating it like their own private country club. <laughs> I quickly realized the rooms were vacant because Robert and Ari have alienated themselves from the town, and the inn's appearance is completely deceiving. What is that smell? It smells like shit. It's like someone's shot under the bed. And instead of working with their employees... Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. Else. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. This place is fucked. They're oppressing them like indentured servants. I'm barely surviving, financially and emotionally. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. And communication is almost non-existent. Unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Well, I have been asking. I said, where does this chicken go? So ask him again! And what's worse, I was completely shocked to learn that the staff never get paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. And when I confronted Robert and Ari in front of everyone, all I got was excuses. I don't have a secretary, Gordon, I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? They don't have to work here. How dare you? Go on then, you pompous fuck. Don't talk to me like that. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. So far, my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn has been shocking. Yeah, but it smells like shit. And the root of the problem is beginning to show. You don't get paid? I've seen with my own eyes how poorly this place is run. But now I need to see what happens to the bottom line. <laughs> when Robert and Ari use Juniper Hill as their own private playground, entertaining all their friends. I'm hoping estate manager Ryan can help me. A lot of the staff are telling me their um, friends pop up from Manhattan and come and spend weekends and sit, drink, and be merry. Are these guys actually paying? Uh, no. Robert had a slew of friends come and stay for free and eat for free for weeks at a time, and that's why they've been losing money since I've been here. What do the colors mean? Help me understand that. Green means they're paid in full. Red means they have not paid. Oh my god. I have 50 room nights. That's between November and December. Well, just two the average, they're $200 a night. But that's... It's like $10,000 in revenue. That's $10,000. They're running it in almost a like a clubhouse, almost like they're trying to buy friends. And Robert prides himself as the superior business person. Robert walks around like he's the king and that everybody hears a bunch of hicks. This is insane. I mean, this is like a private club for him. He's worked with the servers before and accepted a portion of the tips. Oh my God. Fucking hell. He's taking their bloody tips. And this guy is mad. I can't believe this. He doesn't pay them, and then he takes their tips. I've got to talk to him. How are we? Barbara, how are you today? Good. And just out of interest, is it true that Robert takes a percentage of the tips? Yes. He does? Yeah. And what percentage of tips does he take? What we get. 
He gets the same as you. Yeah. It's Otherwise. really hard to keep track of the tips. I it, the, the bookkeeping it, it yeah, doesn't. So, it seems inconsistent. But why is he touching the tips? He because did the same thing for New Year's. They felt that because they needed to cover part of the band, that they took the tips off. A of uh, tip. That's why we don't make anything here. An owner has no right to take the staff's tips, and with all the room and food comps Robert is giving his friends, it's no wonder the inn is struggling. The staff shouldn't be subsidising the inn so Robert and his friends get to live the high life for free. It's sickening. I have to confront him and figure out this nonsense. I just had a look round and I just... I, I am flabbergasted. I'm going to be really frank and I'm going to try to stay so calm. But if I smell BS that you start going into denial, I'm going to let rip again. I studied your reservations. Last November, December, 49 rooms were given out for free. And on top of that, they ate, they drank. For nothing. I'm not even tipping. And I'm just, the fuck are you doing? Tell me why. I thought I needed to have somebody here. Rather than having two other guests in the hotel all by themselves, to have more energy. You're no, making it worse. Not only do your friends not leave tips, but when people do tip the staff, you take a share. On nights that I work, I did take tips. That is disgusting. Why do you think you are right to that? I have tried to work with my staff to teach them that this is the way I want service done. You're so bad. I take a percentage of the tips based on the amount of work that I do. Yeah. And who does the books on those tips? Uh, Ari. <laughs> but if I'm doing their job and I can't get it across to them... You're the owner. You're not the head busboy. You're not the barman. You're the fucking owner. What I was saying wasn't getting through. So the psychology was that if I started to take tips, they would maybe pay attention to that. That is insane. It's the worst management model I've ever heard in my entire life. Do you honestly need a 70-year-old lady's tips? No. So 15, 20 grand's worth of complimentary rooms in food in a two-month period. I'm just, well, it doesn't I, make sense. I have to tell you that the reason Please. I did that was because I thought that they would at least tip my staff. But they didn't tip your staff. Sorry to piss on your bonfire. Well, then I will call my friends and I will tell them, look, what happened? You haven't got the fucking balls to call your friends and ask them to leave a tip. Yes, I do. Call them, then. and ask them, I thought at least, out of generosity, you would have left a couple of hundred dollars tip for the team. Hello? Dana? Yeah? It's Robert. You stayed here recently, and um, I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. Did you leave a well, tip? I left money with you. Uh, no, 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 okay. but you said you were going to send additional tip. You mean? I think my time's done here. That was one of the things that I was hoping you had done. I left the no, money no, no. with you. Well, wait a minute. There's others to call, too. Gordon. Oh, dear. Gordon has left. He thinks I'm stealing my staff's tips. Unbelievable. Joke. Hey, Ray, it's Robert. Did you tip the staff? Because they're telling people that they haven't been tipped. I left the money with you. Oh, so I need to do that. I, I have somehow lost that. Fucking idiot. Gordon left, thinking I'm a liar. I feel as if I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. I mean, I'm gonna lose everything. I'm gonna have to start all over again if this doesn't work, and I just don't seem that I can, can do it anymore. <laughs> no, I can't do it. just left Juniper Hill after catching Robert in a lie about his staff getting tips. I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. It, did you leave a tip? No, I left the money with you. The guy is maddening, and I don't know if I've got it in me to help fix the place. I'm so pissed off with Robert right now. Honestly, I cannot stand any more of his bloody lies. This guy doesn't deserve the team that is in his hotel. He treats everyone so badly. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the internet, instead of actually trying to perfect a menu, he doesn't even pay them properly. I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. I work very long days yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. How can someone so rich not pay the people he employs? That's something I simply won't stand for.
As angry as I am, I feel I have to help the staff get paid. And I have an idea of just how to do it. I'm going to hire a team of white glove movers to assemble all of Robert's most valuable antiques from the storage units, the basement, and around the inn. I'm hoping when confronted with all the money he's wasted, I can convince Robert to sell some of his vast collection to pay his staff. If this is going to work, I must stay calm while I talk to Robert. Um, I've come back. Not for you, but for the staff. They deserve better. We're losing on average 15 mm -hmm. to $20,000 a month. And we are short. But you have a serious hobby of sort of an art collector, an art dealer. I mean, you could open a museum. How many pieces do you have in there? Oh, my god, hundreds. What are we talking about? Everything collectively. All those beautiful oil paintings, the expensive stuff. At a suitable auction, um, maybe $300,000. $300,000. And that would supplement you for the next 12 months, 18 months? Yes, that would certainly get us through. That would get us through two years. Um, right. There's something I want you to see. Yeah. Okay. I'd like you to come with me, please. If there's one thing we need right now, is an injection of funds. Wow. Robert, no man alive needs this much stuff. Walking in, it was shocking. Now, antiques, oil paintings, silverware. Does it not, I mean, frustrate you that we're sat with all this, and yet we can't pay our staff properly? There's someone I'd like you to meet. She's the head auctioneer at Bonhams in Boston. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Gordon. Uh, nice to see you. Gordon, great to see you. Likewise, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're in the shit, basically, and this stuff needs to go. We need to raise as much money as possible. So what's the best price we can get for all this stuff? What you have here doesn't read as a collection to me. It's kind of an accumulation. A lot of copies of things, or if they are right. of the period that they're supposed to be, there's some condition issues. Um, wow. I would say about 25,000. Say that again? 25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. Amy's opinion on our, our things was shocking. And I can't really believe that. And the painting? The painting is a copy. And not a good one, I'm afraid. How much is that worth? I can't imagine what someone would pay for it. It's, it's really very low value. Wow. Robert, I thought you said it was expensive, 18th century. Well, it's dated. I dated 17th century. It is, but it's not actually of that period at all. I'm sorry. Did you know that was a copy? I did not know that that was a copy. Lots of copies. Reproductions. Reproductions. We're hoping in the ballpark of three to 400,000. 25 grand for everything. Yeah. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. Even all this amazing silverware. I put $100 on everything on this table. $100? What about this? First period, this is Sheffield. Yeah, it's plate. What about this? 175 bucks. Th those are Vakar candlesticks? They just don't bring very much at auction, I'm afraid. Uh, is this the kind of collection that you'd be willing to sell at Bottoms? Would you take the whole lot? No, we wouldn't. Wow. We would have to say no. We're floating as if we've got this asset full of three or $400,000 worth of antiques. We haven't, and we're distracted with the bits of crap in here. It was a wake-up call. Thank you. That's sure. a start. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. It means that we don't have the backup that we thought we had. We've paid more money for fucking storage than they're worth. Than they're worth. Does that not bring it home a little bit earlier that you need to be an innkeeper, not a part-time antiques dealer? Because you fooled me. You gave me the tour, and I thought, wow, this guy is, uh, he's got serious cash to burn. But right now, we're even further in the shit than I thought we were. So the pressure intensifies. You need to focus on fixing the business because that's what's going to generate sufficient funds to keep this place open. And I don't think you quite realize that your staff, they're miserable. They don't like Ari's barking. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. One. I am the boss. You bitching. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu, it's not a nice atmosphere for the staff currently. And if they quit, you're fucked. They are staff. 
They're not pigs that live in the fucking basement. If you think that's not the case, and you're that delusional, and you're not prepared to listen to anything I'm saying, you're fucked. Sell the inn, sell this shit in here, and give up. I've just come back to try and save Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought I could use some of the owner's vast array of antiques to get the cash flowing. But I've just discovered... I would say about $25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. That I was wrong. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. With no assets, the challenge to make this place work is bigger than ever. Tomorrow, I have to start the process of change. Before I get stuck in, there's one thing I want to try. You're freezing now. Molly, now it's time to see if I can get through to Robert and Ari. Can I just borrow you for two minutes? I want to show you something. Yes, yeah, both of you together. I'd like you to come up to my uh, room. Thank you. If this place is going to work as a business, Robert and Ari need to hear some home truths oh. about how their paying customers really feel about their precious inn. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, popping into my room. <laughs> How was your stay last night? Well, we didn't know where to go when we walked in, so we walked around and around until we found somebody to help us check in. I was slightly disorientated when I checked in as well. I mean, there's no signs in terms of reception, no. front desk, or bar, no, 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 lounge, no. or... And how were the rooms? I had space heaters to heat the room up. Oh, really? Yeah, three rooms. When I checked the room, it was like a sauna. Look, he sounds activated. Raise your hands if you'd come back, please. Not like it is. Not like it is. There's someone I'd like to hear from who hasn't said anything yet. He is a lead inspector of the diamond collection of hotel and inns across America. In a nutshell, very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, no check-in area, I was totally lost. And the bar's a joke. You should not even be there, folks. It looks as if it's set up for a wedding. The hospitality is nice, but everything else fails. How do you feel? I don't want my guests to have that experience. You know, our goal is to please people. That's why we're in the in business. And we've obviously fallen really short. Um, For me, I think that's positive feedback. So I'm grateful entirely. Let me tell you, thank you all. Can I uh, keep you two here, please? Yes. Thank you. The guest feedback please. has certainly been constructive. Thank you. Thank you. And Robert's thank even you. using a word I've never heard from him before. We are sorry. But I'm shocked by Ari's response to the guest complaints. What's the matter with you? Why are you so angry with guests? Why are you running an inn when you're so bitter? You look like you don't give a shit. I'm not saying that I don't like the guests, but uh, if you have ever been an innkeeper, it's 24-7. No one is more touched by what these people say. Well, well Ari is I mean, clearly, but... Uh... I would love this to be our, our private home. But I am. It's a lost cause. And Ari does have a different way of dealing sure. with I things. see that. Based on my experience, I would seriously request both of you actually sit down and reconsider whether you should be in this business going forward. It's clear to me that Ari isn't cut out for the hospitality business. And even though Robert now understands how he's let down his guests, he needs to understand that he's also let down his staff and failed to recognise their potential. I've got a plan that will help Robert to see what he's doing wrong and how he can fix things in his kitchen. I've asked Chef Julian to cook three dishes from Robert's expensive old menu and three new dishes of his very own creation. Once he's finished, we're going to pretend I cooked the new ones and see what Robert says. Crucially, Julian's dishes are all ones that could be served on a $29 menu, half what Robert currently charges. Look at that. $74, $29. Let's go. Good luck. OK? Yes. I can't wait to see what Robert thinks of Julian's affordable food when he thinks that I've cooked it. I asked him to cook a three-course meal. Yeah, he cooked his lamb, his crab cake and the dessert. That's the $74 version. I cooked the other meal. I got hold of some chicken, some sprouts, and I used the crab and a butterscotch pudding with some caramelised popcorn. $29, that's what those three courses are going to cost. Julian's three new dishes are fantastic and fairly priced. That would go a long way towards bringing guests back through the front door. Now that Robert thinks I've cooked them, I bet he loves them. Talk to me. Excellent. 
fabulous. And the um, Brussels sprouts are really good too. Mm -hmm. You've actually leafed them and mm -hmm. it's very pretty. Mm. Well, this is a much better value. I've never heard you use that word value. And we could get two for the price of one. What we should do. So my menu or Julian's menu? Your menu. My menu. Now, I'm flattered, but there's something I need to tell you. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I felt at that very moment that I had done Julian a disservice. Robert, have you got something you'd like to say to your chef, Julian? I'm sorry that I haven't given you the freedom to do what you need to do. I guess I have to eat it and say that I have restricted him from being who he can be, which is, is really difficult. And um, I have to say that this is delicious. Coming up? He's emotionally constipated. Robert has a major decision about his future with Ari. I think he gave up. Now that owner Robert's heard from the guests. Very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. And sample the kind of affordable, high quality food his chef can cook when given the chance. Excellent. Fabulous. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I hope this is all starting to sink in with him. Well, how are you feeling? I'm feeling all sorts of things. I mean, there's, of course, fear. But surely hope too. Your chef's food was amazing. Absolutely. It was an epiphany. I feel regretful that I have come across in the way I have and that I haven't exhibited to my staff the leadership they needed and the compassion that apparently I'm, I must be void of. I think for you to tell them how you're feeling, what you're gonna to commit to, how important they are for you. I know that this place wouldn't be here without them. And I'm wanting to do everything I can to show them that we can make this work. I'm glad Robert's on a new path. I just hope it's not too late for his staff to learn to trust him again. You are all valuable to me and to Ari and to Juniper Hill. And I fear that we have not always expressed that. And we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Sorry for your paychecks being late. Sorry for taking part of the tips. Sorry for not communicating, because that was the reality. And one that I'm not proud of, that we're not proud of, but one that we certainly can correct. And that's what we want to do. The business is short of cash flow. I thought there was a substantial collection of three to four hundred thousand dollars worth of assets. I mean, why don't you explain exactly? In the things that were assembled here, um, they said, lucky if we got 25,000. We are on our ass. It is going to be difficult. And I think Robert has realized the bubbles burst. And he understands the truth to where we are. I think there's a perception that we are these wealthy magnets coming in and Lord of the Manor sort of things. That's not who we are. You know, I knew there was some um, bad situations here, but I stayed because I want to be here and I want to help him. And uh, I believe what he says. And I'm very proud of you, Robert. You're the man that I've always known and loved. It's, he's coming back. I'm glad to see that, you know, we're facing facts, and uh, that's the only way we're going to get out of this. Agreed. Thank you. Ryan, what do you think of what Robert just said? I wanted to stand up and clap. I did, too. <laughs> I feel like I'm working for somebody who can actually run a business when I hear things like that that can succeed. I've never seen Robert so serious. This is actually really a life-changing thing for him. And I feel like I want to be part of the changes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the truth's boy. important. It's humbling to have to admit some of the things that haven't gone right. But at the same time, it's energizing to see that people really do care for us and care for Juniper Hill. That is what's going to make us successful. I'm impressed with the way Robert dealt with his staff meeting. I've got real hope that he can make this place work, but he has another lesson to learn. He thinks people aren't spending money at Juniper Hill because of the recession, but I think it's the snobbish atmosphere and the high prices that have kept people away. I'm taking Robert to a fantastic local brewery to show him how a warm welcome can translate into money in the bank. Let's go and have a beer. Let's get in with the locals. Trust me, they won't beat you up. <laughs>
You are like a fish out of water right now, honestly. <laughs> You're like a vegetarian in the middle of a big steak tartare. Look at you. <laughs> No, no. Well, I love the people from our region. The Upper Valley is filled with amazing people. The Juniper Hill is not I filled know. with local people. Wouldn't you welcome this atmosphere? Oh. oh, yeah. In your stately house? Absolutely. Everyone is welcome. Stand on there and tell them you need them. Off we go. If I could have your attention, please. I'm Robert. I'm the innkeeper at Juniper Hill Inn. We just want to tell everybody we'd love to have you all up at Juniper Hill Inn. And uh, we need the help right now. So if you can come up and have dinner or just have a drink and just say hi, it would be great. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. If Robert can always be that inviting to the locals, he surely has it in him to be the leader of the inn. When was the last time you brought Ari here for a beer? We haven't been here probably in six months. How was he after you spoke to the team like that? You know, the, the, the interesting thing with Ari is yeah. his exterior is Finnish. You know, he's very stern. stern, but he feels deeply. He can't express it, though, can he? He can't. He's emotionally constipated. I think he gave up. That can't come across to the staff. That can't come across to the customers. So no. you, you've got to almost isolate yourself from that. But he's getting through it. But he's not going to be the face. He's not going to be the ink. No, he's back. not. But he can provide a phenomenal amount of support behind the scenes. Cheers to that. Coming up. It's fantastic. I show off the new and improved Juniper Hill Inn. Oh my goodness, look at this. But assistant innkeeper Sarah's joy is short lived. I'll be in my room. You look terrible, what's the matter? I'm sick of it, Gordon. It's been a tough week here at Juniper Hill Inn, and owner Robert's pompous ways have been maddening. I don't have a secretary, Gordon, I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? but he's finally come off his pedestal to get on the same level as his team. You are all valuable to Juniper Hill, and we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Overnight, my team has been working on a remarkable transformation, and with relaunch upon us, it's a chance for a fresh start for everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let me introduce you to the new Juniper Hill Inn. It's no longer a hangout for the super rich <laughs> or your mates getting freebies. Yeah, it's now a nice, warm, and very welcoming country inn. And trust me, everyone is welcome, whether you're driving up here in a Mercedes or even a pickup truck. <laughs> you ready? Yes. yes we let's are. go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Please, come in. Come through. The Great Hall is a beautiful room, but it was hidden by vast amounts of furniture. Oh, my That's goodness. Nice. Look at this. My team have edited the collection and created a feeling of comfort and space. When I walked in the Great Hall, it felt like a different room. Gordon put together this amazing place. It feels comfortable and warm. You have a spacious, gracious, warm reception room. Look at it. Gone is that hideous makeshift bar. Thank you. Gone. <laughs> Guests know where to go because they have proper signs. Ready to see the dining room? Yes. yes. Come through. Oh, oh it's warm and welcoming. So oh, I love this. No longer feels like your grandmother's parlor. It really is a dining room. It's what you expect from a country inn. Yeah, it has an identity. Right. Gone are those hideous sofas that <laughs> nobody can sit and eat dinner in. Ari, what do you think? Very nice. Very you nice. like it? Very open. Excellent. Let me show you my bedroom. Okay. Please. <laughs> Everybody else can come too, please. You ready? We're ready. In you go. Do you know what's wrong with this room? Nothing. You don't need to do anything to them. The only thing wrong was the smell in room one, and the plumber's taking care of that. The guest rooms are the absolute highlight of your inn. That meant something, because it meant we were on the right track. We just needed a, a, a better directions. Now, the key to filling this is to charge sensible prices. I would rather have the room sold at Absolutely. a cheaper price and have an 85% occupancy rate across the year. Bring the yeah. prices down, fill it, let them enjoy this quality. The stunning bedrooms didn't need changing, but there's one room that did need a significant overhaul in order to bring in much needed cash flow. Now, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. OK. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. Come with me. OK. We need to attract the local community. I'd like to welcome you to the Blue Bar. Oh. Blue Bar. Oh. Look at this. Oh. 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 Oh
the best new local bar in Windsor. Fantastic. This is so great. Walk in and see the people sitting there and the games on the tables and the beautiful drinks. It was very emotional. I loved it. The Blue Bar is exactly what the town of Windsor, Vermont and Juniper Hill Inn need. I'm hoping it will be popular, especially on a day like today, when the inn hosts its first ever Sunday lunch service. The staff are all getting ready for the arrival of their lunch guests. Five, six, seven, eight, so you got four tables each. But while everybody else is busy, Ari seems lost and needs reminding of his role here at the inn. I'm here. Oh, jeez. Right. OK. Well, Had to go the doing? other way. Are you in? Are you out? Are you doing the checks? What are you doing? I was checking in people. You're That's... checking in. But I thought that was the great I thought you were checking in people. Okay. You want to check them in and sure. take them up? That'll be great. Would you Thanks. be so kind? Just two yes. seconds. I'm so sorry. Would you continue that? Of course. Can I just have you for 30 seconds? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Come this way. I thought you were going to leave the front of the house to Robert. I thought you were going to be the back of the house. No, one thing is that Robert asked me to, to check in people with, uh, because he had to uh, take people to the dining room. Yeah, I know, but... We have a saying in England. Yes. Too many chefs spoil the broth. You're um, not a natural innkeeper. Oh, OK. okay. He needs your help. Yes. But yes, behind the scenes. Yes. Explain to Robert that you're going to support him from behind the scenes. Yes. Please? Yes, sure. Please. I'm going to do that. I think Ari has finally got the picture and understands that he needs to play to his strengths. I really hope that things can continue to improve now. Come on, Sophie. We better remove the dog. She's going to eat the food. <coughs> Sophie, our poodle, she shouldn't be in there. I mean, it's a, it's a place where we eat. Come on, Sophie. Come on, come, come, come. That's not for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, honey. Excuse me. Come on, come on. I take come care come. of the dog, OK? Excuse me. The dog shouldn't be in the bar. He's on the seats eating the food. Really? I am the boss, OK? What Don't do ever talk to me that way again. Excuse me. Don't ever, and I mean it. I'll be in my room, and I don't need to be yelled at. I'm coming towards the end of my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought we'd turn the corner. But as the inn's first ever Sunday lunch service approaches, assistant innkeeper Sarah has gone missing. Where's Sarah gone? I haven't seen Sarah in about a half an hour. Is she OK? I don't know. You don't know? OK, just ask him. Has Sarah gone home? What? Has Sarah gone home? No? The team can't afford to be a man down. I've got to find her. Who is it? It's me, Sarah's Gordon. Oh, hi, Gordon. Are you OK? Oh, no. I... What? Hold on a second. Dear, oh, dear. Danny, I thought you joined us for lunch. Oh, thanks. I'm not going to. What's the matter? You want to come yeah. here? Yeah, you look terrible. What's the matter? Oh, I'm just really That's upset. Fine. I don't want to get upset. You were with us half an hour ago. Customers are in the bar. I know. And My they... first table's just arrived. I just expect you to be there in terms of you're part of this team. I know, but I, I'm sick of being yelled at by Ari. I'm sick of it, Gordon. When did he yell at you? Just a few minutes ago because I asked him to take the dog out of the dining room. Naturally. It's his dog, and it's sitting on the bar furniture. Okay. Please come back down. Oh. Buck up and come down. Nobody's ever seen me break down in tears in this inn. It's never happened before. Just come back downstairs. OK. Please? Yeah, I will. Gordon. OK. Yeah, I want to help I don't want to see you upset. And the girls need you down there. They do, and I'm just, I'm just really <laughs> mad at them. No, well, let me go and have a word with Ari. This is ridiculous. Get yourself ready. The place is full of locals, and they'd love to see you too. OK. Please. At Smiley. Yes? Good yes. Girl. Yes, I'll bounce back. I'm not sure why Ari is snapping at his staff, but it just proves my gut was right about his place being behind the scenes. Ari? Yes? I've just found Sarah upstairs in floods of tears. Everything OK? No, we had a little run-in because we both are very strong people. She snapped at me, and I snapped back. Do you think the dog should be running around in the bar? No, no way there, I guess. The so was she right or wrong? She was right. Would it be appropriate for you to apologise to her? Do you, do you oh, feel yeah. that you're yeah. responsible from behind the scenes? Is there any way we could just, for this first Sunday lunch, sure. try to keep the team together? OK. I think Ari's heart is in the right place, but his tone is all wrong for an innkeeper. He needs to be the power behind the throne. I'm sure this is going to be one of the busiest days yet at Juniper Hill Inn. And I need to remind Chef Julian to make good use of his sous chef Nida if he's going to have any chance of being successful. Julian's proved to Robert and I that he has the talent and the potential in the kitchen. Now he just needs the help to execute. I know you're adamant the fact that you're going to work on your own, but you are not a one-man band, yeah? Yes, Chef. Encourage, entice. Over to the stove. The local community have responded to Robert's invitation, and there's a great atmosphere. As people turn up to check out the bar and sample the new menu I put together with Chef Julian. Tara, nice to see you. Welcome to Juniper Hill. Hi, Hi Anya, dear. Nice, nice to see you. Good as well as new arrivals, the inn has a return guest, Hotel Inspector Steve Talon. His first visit was a disaster. Very disappointed. 
didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, I was totally lost. This is Robert and his team's chance to prove to Steve that they've learned their lesson. I hope this time Hello they're there. flawless. How are you, Mr. Talon? Nice to see you. Nice to see you yes. again. Welcome. So this is our new menu. OK, what's going next? Coming up next, we have one trout. The key to this place running smoothly is communication among the entire staff. But Chef Julian still doesn't seem to get that. How long for the first flat iron, please, Nida? Medium rare. Medium rare. Ask her, Julian. Medium rare. Talk to Nida. I don't care what it's about, the fucking weather. I don't care, but talk to her, OK? Come on, you've got to talk. I just said, come on. She can put things on a plate for you, just refusing to talk to her. And it's going to be so fucking painful now. I simplified the menu in order to get it so much easier for you. You know that? Yes, chef. And the menu was designed for you to open up and talk, OK? Yes, chef. Look at me. Yes, Look at chef. Broaden your mind out. And all you do is one plate, focus. Next plate, focus. And I just want you to open up a little bit. She's there to help. Thank you. You know what, let me do this. Just help with the skillet, help with the skillet. Fucking hell. Julian! Yes, come here. Fucking hell. What's the matter with you? You've just shut down on me. Now, do you want to give me your jacket and I'll do it for you? No, Chef. It's not difficult. I know, Chef. Can you do this? Open up. Come on. You've just shut down. With Robert working well with the team. OK, thank you so much. And Ari staying out of the way, the bar is bustling. How are you? Welcome. What can I get you to drink? But Chef Julian needs to raise his game and start communicating. If we're going to make today a success. You've just shut down on me. Open up, please. Get it together. Let's go. You'll be at four minutes at that table. So you do one plate, I do one plate. Is that good? All right, so then you get, with the lamb shank, then you get some lamb glaze, which is right here. Julian, nice, much better. Look yes, at me, yes, much chef. better. Yes, Chef. Good. How is everybody out there? Chicken. 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 Wow. The locals are definitely noticing a change here. It was wonderful. It's very good. I was very surprised. Perfect. As you're saying, it's perfect for me. Great. Time to see if the hotel inspector has to. Oh, Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. Recognise a few changes? In some ways, I didn't recognise it at all. Oh, really? So good. What, the uh, entrance hall in terms of? The total openness, mm -hmm. welcoming, but the signs everywhere. When you walked in, was it warm? Was it? Oh, it's great warmth. Now I feel it, it has that time collection feel. Mm -hmm. Good That's job. Nice yeah. Enjoy lunch. Appreciate it. Pork's amazing. Okay. Thank you. I'm trying. Thank you. There's a great buzz at the inn. Sir, can I have a second? Yes. I hope that's not all about to change. I'm really busy. I just want to hear that. I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I mean, okay. I'm trying to help, Ari, oh, no. and you're, oh, no. you're snarling yeah. me a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. This food is affordably priced. It's really, really tasty. And it's nice to know a nice place to send people to get a drink and relax and everything, and that's hard in the area, so that's great. Robert and Ari's communication has improved by leaps and bounds since I've been at the inn. Let's go back just for a second. But actions speak louder than words, and I think Robert is starting to understand that. I just wanted to tell you that um, I really appreciate all the extra effort you're giving. Not just this week, but the entire time you've been here. And this is your paycheck, literally, because we know you need it. We wish we had more. We put $100 extra in there for you, just so you have a little bit extra, because we really do appreciate you, Ryan. So, thanks. Thank you very much. You and I are going to bring this back, and Ari's going to join us. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been that emotionally moved in a long time. I, I feel like it's all been worth it now. I just, I feel like I, it's appreciated. What a week. I think this business is on the road to recovery, and Robert and his team, with Ari in the background, can really make this place work, because once the locals invest in this place, word is going to spread big time. Beautiful. It's time for me to say my goodbyes. But with the crowd enjoying themselves in the bar and loving the great value in the dining room, it's a hard place to leave. Really good. This is nice company. This is, yeah. We're yeah. sharing the lamb shakes. Oh, lamb. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, right, finally, 
You seem to have got this under control, yes? Yes, Chef. And you're opening up? Yes, Chef. Don't stop talking. Yes, Chef. Communicate. Good job. Thank you, Chef. He might have beat a few people down, but then he brought a few people right back up, and uh, that was necessary. I'm just glad he didn't smack me with a spatula. Ari? Robbie. I've come to say goodbye. I was uh, doing Look my after paychecks. Yourself. You're okay. writing paychecks? Yes. Good luck with the place. It's a business. Absolutely. Look after yourself. Uh -huh. Look after Robert uh -huh. and support him in all the right places. Thank you. Best wishes. We are very grateful for him that he has patience for us. Because <laughs> it, it's not uh, easy to restructure molded minds. Look after yourself. Yes? Look after yourself. Okay. Mike, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. And it seems like you've got this under control. I'm going to keep it under control. Well, the staff are doing the job, the bar's functioning, the dining room's functioning, kitchen's functioning. That's good, that's beautiful. Dude. Ari's in the RV. And there are people. And they seem to be having a good time. You're on the track now. We're on track. I've got a little present for you, stay there. Having Gordon come to Juniper Hill has meant a lot to us. It was harder than hell, but ultimately, I know it's going to do great things for our staff and for our town. This is something that money cannot buy, but this week, you've earned it. Now, the most important thing, please keep it up. This is your side to be part of the amazing setup, the Diamond Collection. Thank you. You deserve this. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well Safe done. journey home. Well he really did awaken me, put a fire in me, and I want him to come back and say, you really did it. That's our goal. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. Whew. What a beautiful day. I can't believe those storage units are still there. If I was Robert, I'd lock Ari in one of them. <laughs>